All right, so we're back for another video. My name is Cole Hansen, and why don't you start by introducing yourself? Hi, my name is Tona Weagle. I live in Jacksonville, Florida, and I have breast implant illness. And um, I'm, I'm really excited, first of all, because you have a whole other side of your story that mm -hmm. is really great for people to hear. Let's start with uh, maybe how long, because you just explanted. Um, right. When, when did you remove? I explained it on October 13th. Okay, so literally, I mean, that's 12, 12 days. 12 days. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, if you want to share your doctor's name, feel free. Yeah. My doctor is Daryl Blinsky, B-L-I-N-S-K-I. He's in South Miami, Florida, and he's been practicing for over 40 years. So he's got okay. a, lot of, a lot of surgical experience. Awesome. And what? Let's um, maybe let's go for a backstory on what made you – find out that breast implant illness was a thing or that your implants might be making you sick. Okay. I'm going to do the shortest version of this. So <laughs> the shortest version is I nursed both my children. Uh, after I nursed them, uh, my breasts were smaller, the right side specifically because I had a latched on baby that didn't take a pacifier and she cried all the time. Right. So I was out West. He said, I basically had her in a little carrier and um, I damaged my right muscle. I, ba I was just a human pacifier. Uh, I don't regret it, um, but uh, my, it was pretty funny. And so she stayed latched on when I was in nursing. Um, like I was saying earlier, uh, one breast was a bit smaller than the other one. It was hard to wear button-down shirts, V-neck. Um, and so in 2003, I had a partial hysterectomy, and my doctor offered me plastic surgery to fix my breast. And I thought, well, two for one. <laughs> I'll do it. Um, I just knew I was getting, I, I made sure I asked, I, I was getting saline, just water. That's what I was told. It's just water. And um, so I got them and I really didn't have many problems with that set. Um, fast forward to 2000, I had, my husband and I look back now between 2003 and 2010, there are things that happened in my personality, like things that happened. Um, anxiety, I hadn't had that before. I mean, I had a little bit, but not like the, I definitely had ton of anxiety, just little things. The second set in 2010, I had a leak on the right side. So I had them replaced. I had a warranty. And so I paid for the anesthesia, flew back out to Idaho. I had them redone, put in that, um, can I say the name? Allergan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Allergan, um, saline natural. And within probably the first year I had a lot of issues but I never knew it. And so I went through the years um, and a lot of moves and we moved to Florida and I said, you know, I'm going to go to Mayo. I'm just going to go to Mayo. I'm going to find out what's wrong with my stomach. What's wrong with my, these issues I've been having. Mayo built my entrance company, $30,000 and I paid 3000 of that. Right. And I had every test imaginable. They never asked me about my implants. It's on my paperwork. And in fact, uh, I'm kind of back to, I, I are jumping ahead. I actually have a phone calling with them. I'm going to meet with them. I have a phone calling with the ER that misdiagnosed me the pulmonary doctor who misdiagnosed me and my OBGYN has already called me back and he was wonderful. So I just want to educate people. This is what was wrong with me. So 2010, I had them replaced. The issue started, went to Mayo. They never figured out what was wrong with me. They told me I had a food intolerances. So I followed a strict diet um, and I did get, I do have food intolerances. That is true. Um, but I didn't believe them. So I sent my hair analysis and my kids to the United Kingdom because I felt like it wasn't controlled by the FDA in the United States. So I just, it came back and sure enough, I did have a lot of those food intolerances. So um, I just eat that way still. Um, I did add rice back into my diet and, but I kept getting sick. I kept thinking, uh, just little things like I'm, I turned 40 on October 16th. So in the last two years, I kept thinking, I'm just getting older, you know, or this is hurting or this shoulder's hurting or this nerve pain here or, um, fatigue, shortness of breath. Um, it was just a whole, I've got like a whole list of things here, but, um, I ended up what got my attention was four months ago, I could not breathe mm. and I do CrossFit and weights and stuff. And I really 
couldn't do it as well. And when um, I started back in August, after the kids were off for summer, I mean, I do a little bit in the summer, but not as hard as I would during the school year. Um, I was literally breathing like this. <sighs> you could just hear it. It's like, sure. Ask. And um, so um, I knew, noticed a lot of issues with this muscle. My right, I had a pain, a nerve pain in this shoulder. I couldn't even touch my shoulder. Now I can like stick my fingernails in it. It's, <laughs> it's still a tiny bit sore down in here. But I mean, it, literally, I couldn't touch it. Sure. And the nerve pain down my leg felt like someone just stabbing me. So I ended up uh, not breathing and I'm going to breathe. And yard and they've looked at my medical records. I'm not a hypochondriac. I do not go to the doctor. I don't even take medicine. Um, so when they looked at that, they were like, this is strange. Um, but they really just couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They just said, your lungs are clear. But I had a, a, a bubble. And it had bothered me for two years. And this bubble would come around underneath my right breast and through my diaphragm. Mm. It would have to dissipate. It was so painful. Like on the left hand, I was a 10. Um, and it would make my jaws hurt. Right. My jaws felt like I had had jaw surgery. It was so strange. And I kept thinking, what is this have to do with this? I just couldn't figure out. And then like two weeks later, um, started getting water on my brain. Like I felt like I had water in my head. Right. And I would, I felt like, uh, and I've heard other people say this. I felt like I had, I could turn my head this way and I would be level. But if I like this, I was kind of off and that scared me. Um, on a Monday, I couldn't breathe. My husband said, go to the ER. And that's when I went. They did a CT scan. They saw nothing. My heart was good. My lungs were good. And I said to the girl, let me see that. Right. <laughs> looked. And um, uh, then I, they, I said, basically, you're sending me home. I can't breathe. And you're still sending me home with the same thing. You, you're just, you're not even trying to find the solution. You're just you know, saying, she said, my job is to figure out what you don't have. Right. You don't have a blood clot. Um, so you don't have, you know, the pulmonary embolism, but so that's really, that was it. That's all she had to do. And she released me. Um, and what I learned, and I really want people to know is if I would have said that my breast pain was a 10, I would have probably got different treatment. I had a, an advocate uh, online that told me uh, uh, she's like an insurance advocate for you, for the client. And she said, always say your breast pain's a 10. Don't ever get off that because they have to take you seriously. And I didn't say that because it really, I thought it was my lungs. At that point, I still kind of, I wonder if this is my implants. I, you know, I even sitting in the hospital at night thought that. Um, I came home that week. I still couldn't breathe. I was on an inhaler. Um, it wasn't working. I saw the pulmonologist. He said I had chronic sinusitis. I don't. Um, he gave me an antibiotic. And um, I asked a friend of mine to pray for me because I said, I'm really sick. I don't know what's wrong with my lungs. I'm really, I really am concerned. Sure. And she sent me a little link to breast implant illness. And she said, my friend in Texas has this planted and I really think you have this. And that's the first I'd heard of it. So that when, was probably when was three, this? three months ago. Okay. I didn't mess around. I yeah. was like, okay. Hey, I was like, I'm right there. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like once I knew I got online, I did a ton of research. I talked to a ton of people. Um, you know, I read all the, I read every file like that they had on um, Nicole's um, group. Uh -huh. And, um, and then I set about trying to find a good surgeon. Uh, and what was your, what was your husband's reaction in this process? Well, you know, um, I bought, I bought that book. I bought um, the book from the doctor at the, you know, in, in Atlanta and I read that and he and I, we went through it and he said, this, this is you, this is what you have. And his whole stance the whole time was, even if it isn't, you don't need that in your body. That was, honestly, that was my, 
that was my approach as I was, I said, you know what, but even if it isn't, if I don't eliminate it, I'll always wonder. You wonder. And I can't, always. I can't eliminate it as a possibility. So everything else I do, what if it is? Yeah. But if I eliminate it, then I know it yeah. isn't if there's and it's, still residual it's, stuff. And it's a lot of money, you know, because we had to pay for it out of pocket. Yeah, me too. Um, and so it, I felt bad, you know, having to spend that amount of money. Um, but he just felt like for my health and he, the breathing was the biggest issue. Sure. We knew then I couldn't work out anymore. And I'm like, okay, this is not going to be good. Cause I'm going to get depressed, you know? Yeah, exactly. And so, um, so do you want me to go into, um, what, what, well, Let's, let's talk about, so you just explanted, I mean, <clears throat> you said 12 days ago, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What were the immediate differences? Did you notice anything immediately? Because some women do, yes. some women don't. And I've been very true on this. And even Dr. Blinsky and I talked about this day. He wants a whole list and I told him he's not going to get one for like a month. Yeah, you um, don't know. And I'm going to watch it for six months. I'm very, very tentative person. I think things through and, um, you know, I've, I've said a few things that I've, I've noticed, but I'm really just watching every day. I write down a little note of something, Good. you know, but the, I woke up from surgery and I said, um, the nerve pain is gone in my leg and shoulder. It was immediately gone. And I didn't know, even then I was going, is it narcotics? You know, <laughs> is it anesthesia? So I really eat up until the weekend. I, Thursday, I took the pain medicine and, um, yeah, his medication and stuff till like Tuesday. So I explained on Thursday, I took it till Tuesday. Um, and then I weaned off of it and just went to ibuprofen and Tylenol, but the nerve pain's gone. I mean, those are the two things and the breathing. So number one, um, I did have some problems coming off of, um, they use a gas and an anesthesia. I don't really like that, but that's, they're in a surgery center. I'm not in a hospital. Right. In a hospital, my surgery would have been double. Sure. So, <clears throat> all right. So when, first of all, when Dr. Oblinsky, he um, does not promise you a total end block. I know it's very important to a lot of women. So um, I actually um, feel that that can be um, misleading because when you get in there, he doesn't know until he opens you up. And so when he opened me up, what he, he promised he would try, you know, hundred percent to get the in block means to get the capsule out. And so I think, uh, maybe most of the women know you've got the implant and then the capsule is around your implant. It's what your body nor, um, naturally makes basically like the scar tissue that surrounds the, yes. Implant. And so when he opened me up, mine was rice thin um, and it was stuck on my ribs. And so he, and until I got these medical records today, I did not really know how sick, I, how bad it was. But when he opened me up and he was in there, he scraped and scraped my ribs to get it off. And he had pictures where it's just, it looks like tiny pieces of saran wrap that he's just picked and picked and picked. But he made a decision, um, because I started bleeding and it took him 20 minutes to get the, the, bleeding under control and you know he hadn't even done the fat transfer or the wipe any of that he was just like in the beginning so he went out and he had already talked to me about it he knew my you know I said just do what you can do and he went out and told Tom my husband you know that he thought it was too risky he was right by the lung uh on one particular rib and that he could puncture my lung and he just didn't feel like that that was then we would be at the hospital and it's going to be a whole different ball game right so they made a decision and I, I'm good with that. I wish and I hope that every piece of the capsule came out, but I'm at about 80% on the right side. Also in the right side, I have muscle damage. So he was, when he was going in, let me see if I can pull this up. When he was going in, one of the things that he said was um, that the thinness of the capsule had deformed, that capsule had deformed my pectoral muscle. So he was starting to pull my own flesh and he would have further damaged that muscle. And he just felt like with my life and what I do working out and staying active that I would not want that. And that was another reason why he pulled out of there. Um, so, um, and then, um, as far as the, uh, you know, the left side gave him no trouble. 
It was, she was perfect. <laughs> right side was just a little devious. And then um, he took out, so I want to make people understand this. I had fat remo fat transfer. He does the Coleman method, which is a renowned plastic surgeon. You can look up his medical degrees, but he's in New York City. And that's the reason why I chose Blinsky uh, because I had the difference. I did want to kind of bring this one up to the size. I did not want large. I never had large breasts. He actually made fun of me because I do not have, you know, I just got them back to where they were after nursing kids. And so he took out, I was going to read this. He took out 1500 milliliters of, of blood tinge fat, and then they clean it in a closed collection system. So nothing, you know, bacteria gets to it. And he put 250 milliliters uh, on each side, which I would have probably put 300 over here because she, this, she never acts right. So, <laughs> but it is. And so I will probably end up where this is going to be a tiny bit larger than this one, but it just is what it is. And he did the lipo. Um, um, I didn't, because I was going with small breasts. I didn't need to have, I didn't have a lot of fat on me, but he got on my stomach and my flanks. Overall, the lipo hurt. Worse. <laughs> than anything oh no <laughs> yellow one to ten it was a ten it oh, was wow. the worst so just I, and i tell you honestly just think about that um you know i debated on fat transfer because i you know i, I was debating if i would if it was easier to get a lift or if it was going to make more sense to fat transfer and not have to get a lift okay uh i decided against it just because i haven't had kids and if we decide oh. to, everything's going to fluctuate. So I'm like, do I really yeah, want to? I wouldn't do it either. And yeah. I did get a small internal lift. Um, I actually have good elasticity for my age, he said. And he was really right. uh, blunt about that, too. <laughs> He's like, yeah, really. So I, I didn't need a full donut lift. And I wanted my breasts to be natural and how they um, were positioned on my body, I guess you could say. So, sure. Yeah. So look and see that. But yeah, so that was my biggest thing. Um, was that and now um, I was going to see if I had anything else in here that I thought um, the major do you have any other questions for me I could pull this up I well I mean let's talk about um, some of the things that you've been doing to just to eat cleaner you talked about some of the skin products you use yeah. especially for women that are doing their research right now mm-hmm everyone's hearing about detoxing and getting rid of metal and mold and any yeah. beauty products with silicone or chemicals or because some women with implants right now are really sick. And after they yes. explant, they get really sick. They're basically yeah. getting this, these like molds and uh, metal loads just dropped into their body at one time. Yeah. So, and I didn't have about, that. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I've been lucky. That's what I was telling you yesterday. I, there are so many women, actually, we lost two women, um, on our side. There was two women that passed away in the last week and a half Wow. that their families feel like this ready to be. And that was just on our side. Um, I really never had those issues. I was never bedridden. I was fatigued a lot. I felt like I had constant fatigue, but my personality, I'm very strong willed. So they said that probably served me well. Sure. Um, because I would have probably any other, I really didn't have a choice. My husband travels. So sometimes I got to take care of these kids and animals, but, um, I ate clean. I'm continuing to eat clean. I'm eating smoothies. I, and probably, oh, 80 to 90 ounces of water a day. I have a protocol of vitamins that I put together. We mentioned like the candida, um, magnesium, and I'd had to give them to you, but you know, I have a whole little 14 pills. Um, that I'm doing and I just made it up uh, on my own and um, I use um, I just started and I don't sell for these people but I may um, it's called crunchy mm -hmm. and it's a non-toxic it's new on the market uh, makeup line and um, I like it uh, I just bought the you know she gave me a little test kit and I, I like it I mean I have to work with it of course it's not gonna be what you're used to at I don't know if I can, you know, at other places. And then the other one that I told you about is I work for Ever Skincare. You see it. So Ever is, we're based out of San Francisco and I've been with them since March. So I totally got off all skincare that had any toxins. Um, Ever is botanically driven uh, and conscious. Clinically great. Um, I just use those products 
eat clean, do my little protocol, and um, I weaned off all the medicines no longer than five days after he had me on them. And I do, I don't sell oils, but I do use some oils too, essential oils. Okay. What is, how do you feel now? How is you, cause you said the lipo has been a little bit rough from the fat transfer. Um, but other than that, how is your, you, you had mentioned you overdid it a little bit. What are the warnings for oh. women that you would say? Cause you said there was a couple of things you. I've told, off. yeah. <laughs> there's a couple of girls I'm like, Oh my gosh. Well, and I didn't meant to say this. My valve of my right implant was in my chest wall. Mm. So uh, I should have said that. Um, that's why I couldn't breathe. Every time the pectoral muscle, mine were under the muscle, every time I flinched, a, anything I did, this muscle was moving, they said. And so that valve, that's why I couldn't breathe. Mm. And it was found in a CT scan and an MRI that I had to insist on getting. MRI they did not want to do. Not my doctor. Right. My doctor wanted to give it. My insurance approved it. Radiology wouldn't approve it. Um, so instantly how I felt was I could breathe. Like I just could breathe. And like, that's, I just, that's the part for me that sounds the most exciting. Yeah. I can't yeah. even tell you. Like well, you're, just, getting, you're getting two pounds off your chest. Some women have four <sighs> pounds of, I didn't have that. I only had a little less than two pounds because um, mine were small. But, um, sure. The, can you hear me? Yes. The thing that they were saying is, um, so I think the other question they asked me on here, I, I wrote this down for everybody was one piece of advice I have too is uh, stay where you're having your surgery for book it out for a week just to be safe mm -hmm. because I, you know, it's my drive home was horrible. Oh, no. It was like five hours, five hours, but you know, your body. Now I had lipo. I think right. if you're just doing an explant, it's different. So if you're doing like one of that, you really need to consider where you're explanting. It's hard to get home. Um, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing a week out in Texas. Well, it's five days after the surgery that I'm staying. And then it's yeah. straight, straight yeah. flight back. And yeah. Oh yeah. Then you're good. Yeah. Because like the ones that I just think, Oh, gotta be careful with, you know, how you're just is so much. And I don't think people, I don't think you realize it really is a major surgery. Yeah. I mean, I mean it really is. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't stress that. The other thing I want to tell you about um, is make sure for the women out there, there are some insurances that do cover it. And so you need to just keep mine didn't I'm, I'm fighting them, but my surgeon does not file any insurance. So make sure that when you're looking for a plastic surgeon, you ask, you file insurance. I, I learned that also. Another point I want to make is some surgeons do their scar up this way. And some of the women are shocked by it. Mine are under. Right. So make sure you ask that because some women don't want that. Some women don't care. Um, I cared because I already had two incisions. Yeah, well, listen, it's, a, it's an intense scar when they do that anchor lift. Like, it's, uh, I mean, it's all the way down the front and underneath. It's pretty. Uh, right. Yeah, so I, I wanted to make sure that. And then, um, let me see, protocol. We already talked about that. Oh, I love these probiotic fizzy. Um, have you seen those at Walgreens? I don't, I don't think so. It, you know, I just get so tired from water. So I just put a little fizzy probiotic. And it, you put it in your um, drink and then I hope it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're like, always just doing our best. You I, know? I know. Like, and then I, I drink. A deep stomach cramps. Right. All chemicals out of your body. So um, I think that's all I got. And make sure you have a, make sure you have a straw because you cannot lift anything. <laughs> Your yes, I'm taking my husband out, you know, to uh, Texas with me to make sure that I'm not lifting anything. And I actually have friends coming over this Sunday before I leave to help me get the house all in order. So that by the time I, I get it. home, yeah, it's all done. <laughs> You're so lucky. I'm like, oh my gosh, I did all that by myself. But but my friend came and my husband were here the week I got home. Right. Um, and we would have been, you know, that was a lot of help. She drove people everywhere, and then. My um, girls from Bible study, they brought me meals and they're bringing my last meal tonight. 
And so really I'm 12 days out. Um, and we, and like you said, on Saturday, I overdid it. I just, I just really kind of did stuff around the house and went one place with my son. And that was just too much. Uh, it took me about 15 hours to recuperate from that. And then you mentioned also you were doing Epsom salt baths or what kind of baths were you doing? I'm doing a clay detox bath. Clay detox. Don't do that until your wounds are healed. <laughs> I do love that. My doctor today said, what? But um, you're not supposed to be. My um, uh, lipo openings, were they were sealed, so it was fine. But I did the clay detox. And as I was telling you earlier, the days that I do those, I am kind of, I don't sleep as well at night and I do sweat. So I'm thinking I might do them earlier in the, like in the morning mm -hmm. and see if that helps because I do them at night. And you won't be able to clean your bathtub if your husband will. So, <laughs> but I like the clay detox. <laughs> awesome. Um, I can't think of anything else. Oh, some people, like, did you bruise? Yes. You're going to bruise. Yeah. yeah. I think that's pretty... that. How bad did you bruise? Yeah. I was like, yeah, you're going to bruise. Well, they asked me that because of the lipo. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And what did, what was um, your, what was your suggested recovery time? Like as far as a timeline, what's recommended for you as far as getting back to a workout regimen or, you know. Oh, he was very clear on that. In fact, that's what he called about today. He told me, um, um, but I will tell you this, this is funny. I tried to walk on Sunday because I live in Florida. It's beautiful. You cannot let your girls bounce. Mm. They cannot move. They cannot move. He, he said to keep them immobile. Right. Um, for the first couple of weeks. So I had, you know, I had to turn around and come back home and I did have little shots of pain that evening and mm. through Monday. So immobilize the breast, keep your compression on, whatever they give you. Um, zip bras are the best because you can zip a little bit and like give a little bit of breathing room. Um, sure. You know, that was a big deal. And you said, a, not you a, said a wedge pillow helped you a lot, having the wedge oh, pillow. Oh, that wedge pillow on Amazon. I don't, I don't even know the brand, um, but the wedge pillow, because I had, I got that before I had surgery because I had to be elevated to breathe at night because mm. of my lungs, because of the valve in my lungs. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, but, you know, you're a lot of, when you go to your surgery, this is for you too. I know you're going to be traveling, but order extra pillows for your hotel rooms. Mm, yeah, good call. You need to be, you just need for your arms, for your neck. Oh, and I had a, um, a neck pillow. Oh, yeah. I travel with one, so I'll, yes. I'll have one with me for sure. Yeah, and a straw was a big deal. I mean, a straw was a big deal. I'm sorry. I just, because my husband would bring the bottle up to my mouth, and I would drink out of it. But my circumstances will be a little different just because like my circumstances versus someone said a double mastectomy versus someone that's like you just getting an explant versus your age versus my age. Just so many little things, you know, sure. and how bit, how sick they are. Whereas like he said, you're in great shape. You're going to bounce right back. And today um, I sent him all my pictures and he said, you're exactly where I want you to be. You're not, you're going to be great by this weekend. He said, you'll be, but I still am not supposed to raise my arms really high. I just do like sure. this. So, you know, that so was really just people need to be mindful of what their doctors tell them. They're not just saying these things. <laughs> like, yeah, because I honestly, I feel like I can, I don't want to get on video, but I feel like I can raise my arms. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to But when I, video. but when I do it, I feel it right here. Sure. A little bit. So I don't want to mess that up. And for me, like he said, you have a live fat transfer. It's come from somewhere else in your body. We put it in your breast. And he said to fat saying, why am I here? Where did you take me from? And he said, if, if you want it to live, because some of it is going to die off, then that's why you have to keep them immobilized and keep them in a tighter bra. You know, the sports bra won't do it. I, I do like if I'm at home with the sports bra, but I can't go up, you know, 
out and I haven't driven for 12 days. Right. I drive, I, I can drive tomorrow and sin, but just really not a lot. Cause yeah, you don't remember you're moving your arms. Yes. And it's all chest. I mean, you're using your chest muscles, even just your grip yeah. is going back to your chest. Yeah. People just don't get that. And so that's or a big deal. Opening things, you know, like yeah. unscrewing something that's going to be all chest muscles as well. I barely could open my smoothie today. I had to get the red gripper out and even today. Right. And I've been trying to go between the left arm and the right arm. And he told me, try and use your left arm more than your right because I'm right handed. Right. Which is probably makes sense is why this right one's been such a pain, you know, but I, I've been trying to use my left a lot more, but the biggest deals for me is that I just want, like you said earlier, I just want it out of my body. It's a foreign object. It's my personal journey. I, I have a lot of friends with implants. Um, I haven't posted personally about it yet. I'm getting all my ducks in a row. Yep. Um, I hope my story changes somebody's life. Um, for six years, I was chasing what was wrong with me. Um, I went to the best hospital in the world, which is Mayo. They never asked about my implants. Even the local surgeon here in Jacksonville could not, he used to work there. He said, I can't believe they didn't ask about your implants. Right. I wish they would have. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, oh my, I would have taken them out then. But um, yeah, I just hope my story helps somebody. I mean, I know that it will, you know, because it's like as, as even as I share more people's stories and I've had friends hit me up that said, wow, since you started talking about it, I was really considering it in the next year. And yeah. now I'm not going to because it's not worth the risk. Even if it's yeah. potential, yeah. it's not and worth they, it. They ask a ton of questions. Like all my friends that, that have the implants, they have asked a lot of questions. Um, the ones that have come by, I had a girl come by today and um, she was just like, wow, they look good, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, yeah, I hope they go smaller. Um, and she's like, really? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I want a sportsy look, you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, I, that's what I'm most excited about is like yes. the, the athletic, because uh, I, I, I'm fitness for a living, you know? I, oh, yeah. I'm fitness instructor, personal trainer. So for yes. me, I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, and I do. I, I did tell him that today. I told him they were too big. I was messing with him. And yeah. um, he's like, I only put 250 milliliters in each side which is, you know, of fat. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I told you to go small. And I was just messing with him. But he said over the next six months, that's another thing women need to know. Don't judge everything by the first week, the first month, you can change up to a year and your symptoms can go away up to a year and your breast can change in that year too. He said, there's going to be a vast difference between now and four months. Sure. Um, and also it's not going to take every issue away because you've had these, I've had these in my body for 13 years. So I can't make a list, you know, a week out. I just want to make sure, you know, I've got my list. I check things off and look at it. But the biggest deal is just the breathing and the nerve pain and the air bubble. Oh, and I want to show you this. I don't know if I can do it, but you probably won't be able to see it. It'll be too crinkly, but my, I have my implants. Oh, nice. Over here. Yeah, they're sealed up. Maybe I'll just try and get um, they're sealed up so I can't touch them. And um, so you'll get them like this and right. you can, you can mail these back to Allergan, but if you do, they're going to probably destroy them. Also, they'll offer you $1,200, but you're signing a waiver saying you won't, you will hold them harmless. My right has black mold floating in it and my left has a small air bubble. So um, I just kind of go like, I want to change things for other women and it's not, even though I'd love to have the $1,200, I'm not going to do it. Well, it's not even worth it. You know, it's almost like there's, we need to band together so that we can all kind of get this force going, you know, yeah. um, for $1,200 at this point, that's not going to save me in, no. any, in any kind of way, you know, with how much I'm paying for the surgery. And, and I'm really lucky. I am because, um, I did a GoFundMe and between yeah. that and private donations, like wow. I really had people rally together to, to get your me. Yeah. Yeah. Mine, um, for me was $8,000 mm -hmm. and I used, um, a no interest credit card. So if you want to know that I just went to bankrate.com. I had really good credit. So I was able to get it. Um, I am fighting my insurance company. Um, it's like my part-time job right now because I'm just going to try. I have to know that I tried. Sure. Um, I'm like, okay, maybe we'll get something back. 
but also just the education from like the OBGYN called me yesterday. He's a wonderful person. He said amazing things about how he learned so much and he actually did fight for me for the MRI. He just ordered me yesterday, ordered me lymphatic massage through physical therapy, which my, he's going to say, <laughs> make my insurance pay for it. You know, not many doctors do that. No, I, I was actually lucky to my uh, general practitioner, my local doctor here, um, yeah. sent me for all my testing and literally even with her, she's like, I, that's what it sounds like to me. We've done everything else. And yeah. I'm not just in a healthy range. I'm like peak condition and yet I'm nauseous yeah. and fatigued and dizzy and all these crazy oh, yeah. things that I should not have. And I'm not nauseous anymore. I was nauseous. Mm. I was so nauseous that I could be walking and be nauseous if my breast, if they, if they moved the wrong way. Mine, I thought I was pregnant for three months that it just kept coming back negative oh. because of all these side effects. And yeah. We weren't actively trying, but we're not not trying. Yeah. <laughs> we're, letting, yeah. we're letting the universe Major, decide yeah. when it's yeah. time. Well, since we found out about this, then we, you know, we got more specific yeah, you need not conceiving right now and yeah. to heal and all that stuff. But that's why I thought I was pregnant because yeah. all those symptoms, it was like, okay, well, that could be. Yeah. And there's a girl that tried to get pregnant forever. And when she had her cheddars out, she is pregnant. Yeah. I saw a few stories like that, actually. Yeah. There's a few that are like, the stories are amazing. I mean, and it's not a bunch of hypochondriacs. I mean, and one of the things that got my attention too on the site was a doctor diagnoses you in seven minutes. I mean, he can spend seven. I will say that my doctor hasn't done that. He's really tried, but he did not know what he was dealing with. Um, and, um, I just got it, paid for it. I'm done. You know, I hope my entrance pays something. Um, I hope the ER reimburses me some money. Who knows? I mean, but I'm going to try yeah. and, see, and see what happens. But, and I'd be happy to do, if you want to check back in with me in like a couple months. Yeah, even like six months, you know. I'm yeah. going to put it in my phone to follow up because I think that's really yeah. important. Um, yeah. I, I want the real story for women, for women that said, listen, it didn't make any difference and I regret it. If mm -hmm. someone's going to regret it. That's something you need to know ahead of time because, um, and, there, and there's another girl that, um, I don't know. I'll just say her first name, but you could find her. I could send you her name's Tara. She's got an awesome story explanted and now has a pretty big issue. Um, Oh, I, I don't want to go into it, but she's a great person that has explanted and she may have a, a diagnosis of something else going on from the chemicals because what, people need to know is these implants have f over 40 toxins in them. Yes. I mean, we don't need that. Well, we and just every, don't need everyone's that. body is going to react differently to certain things. Like yeah. I, I can't have some natural things like lavender gives me a rash. So why, oh, wow. would, why would 40 <laughs> oh chemicals? I live not, on lavender. I know. I love it's the so crazy. smell and it gives me a headache. It's terrible. Wow. I yeah. know. It's terrible. It, well, it can be that it's a subset of women. To me, I don't think, I think that, I think some people just aren't recognizing what's wrong with them. That, that's why the awareness, you know, because it's, yeah. um, I, I only had been going to the doctor for two, three months trying to figure this out. Wow. I mean, I've known women years, years and I see that. tens of thousands mm -hmm. of dollars with no idea. That's scary. And I, that is a and horrifying I, feeling like your body is now shutting down. And what happened? I mean, like I was, you know, you're exercising and then you're feeling all these things. You know, another thing you might want to do a tagline on is because a lot of them get diagnosed and it does say it in your paperwork. You can get Hashimoto's from yes. breast implants. So if you have Hashimoto's, I would definitely consider, and you have implants, I would definitely consider taking them out. And then the second thing they get diagnosed really high is Lyme disease. Yeah, that is a high one. Yeah. So, um, and I consider that because, you know, I hike a lot. I, I thought maybe I, That's I, I, somehow, I, yeah. I didn't know. I had a tick bite on my left, my groin area, uh, two years ago. So I thought that was it. You know, I mean, just like right. all this stuff. So, but I'm glad you're making these videos. I think they're going to help people and I'm excited. So you explain November 10th or yes, the 10th, 10th is my explant date. So I'm almost there. So just as like a final statement for women that are looking to get implants for women that already have them, what would you like, what would you have said to yourself 13 years ago before the implant? I mean, we didn't need well, no research back then. No research back then. So. And um, I think that 
I, I even tell my kids this because my kids are 17 and 15. I have a daughter who's 15. So it's really hard for me to tell my kids, but I was just honest with them. Uh, if I went back to my 2003 self, um, I was really bothered by the, you know, the unlevelness of my breasts. Um, had I known about fat transfer back then, I would have done a fat transfer back then. For sure. I didn't know about it. That's my journey. It doesn't bother some women, um, but it would have probably bothered me. Um, so I definitely would not get implants. There are other options. You've got fat transfer. You've got gel packs. You've got the bra, the boobs you can buy in a box is what they call them. Right. And they work. Um, and you can put those girls in and nobody knows. Um, I even watched the other day a lady, I don't know if you've seen it. She does her makeup. She oh, yeah. did her whole chest. I'm like, like oh my God, I would never do that. <laughs> yeah. I would never do it. But it was really interesting. Um, there's just other options out there. If I went back to my younger self, I would say don't get them. If you're in a bad relationship or a marriage and you're getting them, run. Don't walk. Um, I have a friend that did that. There's a lot of women on the site. There are women that are in the dance industry that got them for those reasons. Yep. Um, there are women like me that had children got them. There's women like you that just, what did you, why did you get I mean, them? I was just really, really young. I mean, I was 18 years old okay. and my mom had implants and she said, man, I wish I would have had them when I was young. Do you want implants? And I was doing pop music. I was signed to a big company in New York City. Okay. So she was like, that'll help your career and your age look and, yeah. and it's safe. So yeah, I know. That's it. It's There's years just ago. so many stories. I mean, but um, I just tell people. I'm lucky I have a supportive husband. I was married when I got him. I'm still married to the same guy. Yeah. And, you know, he's just like, get him out. And I'm fine with that. And, um, but that's just it. I just, I, my own, you know, I won't say, but I have family members that have them. <laughs> um, but I do not tell them to get them out. I let them make their own decisions. Yep. It's the same. My mom still has them. I yeah. share information. And some of the things she describes, I'm like, and what if? And she's like, well, and what if? Like, I'm just not prepared to undergo major surgery. So, like. Well, yeah. And a lot of people, another thing, you know, we could go on about, I couldn't drink wine anymore. It burned. Mm -hmm. That was a, That is one of these top things these women talk about. They couldn't drink wine. I'm like, because I could think of, why can't I drink wine? <laughs> I haven't had a, you know, really here and there a white glass of, a glass of white wine in a year. Right. Um, and just just little things, burning in your chest, drainage down your throat, um, the swishing and the watery in the head, the fatigue. Um, you'll probably list like all that, but sudden food intolerances. Mm -hmm. That's a big, you know, I had a sudden food intolerance to rice. Who can't eat rice? <laughs> Mayo told me there was one guy, a guy over in Hawaii that couldn't eat rice. And I'm like, they're like, we don't know why you can't eat rice. I'm like, you know, so anyway, it's a whole list. and. Um, they can find it online or you probably have access to it. Um, yeah, I'll post a few links because there's a couple yeah. great resources and there's Facebook yeah. groups online. There's Healing by Nicole, which is the big one. That was yeah. like over almost 9,000 members now. Yeah. And this um, website is healingbreastimplantillness.com. Yep. And then we've got, the, we've got the TITS committee, which is T-I-T-S. <laughs> I'm not on that one. Yeah, it's, it's a whole other organization that's great. Uh, one of the women that runs that and was featured on the uh, Animal Planet or which website? Uh, Monsters Inside of Me, a documentary. Yes, yes, I so, watched that. Yeah, so she is one of the ones in that committee. I'll send you okay. the link. It's another great Yeah, group. yeah. It's, it's I went nice out and signed. Um, is that the one that went to Washington, D.C.? Yes. Okay, I, I think I may be on there. I need to get their updates more often. Yeah. And, and then if, if I could say another thing is, Please go out and you can Google this. Um, I, might, I can see a link, but MedWatch and go out and sign the FDA. Supposedly, if they get more than two complaints, which I know they've gotten just this week, maybe they'll investigate, um, you know, Allergan. Or, and we're fighting an uphill battle because you have these companies in bed with FDA, big pharma, you know, pseudocal yep. companies. And as my own you know, doctor friend told me it's a money maker. Implants are a money maker. They're a easy. huge one, huge. And women, the majority of women, um, when I did looked at the statistics on Mentor's website, which I have Mentor implants, okay. it's thirty percent of women will have another surgery within the first year or two. I forget. Yes, it is. That's, that's insane. <laughs> okay. Well, first, I know we keep talking. First of all, ask yourself when you get your implants. 
Are you prepared every eight to 10 years to go in and have your implants taken out? If you get them in your 20s, like you did, that you're 18, were well, you 18 or 20? I was 18. So you can, you might can live to be 80. I'd have to replace them like four times. <laughs> Well, even, yeah, so who's going to do that? And that's, and that's if you don't have any problems like contractures or yes. um, mine have actually migrated to the outside and yeah. fallen out of the pocket, yes. which I didn't even know until I started yeah. shopping for a surgeon to remove them that mine basically had fallen out of the pocket, which, is why, young. I, which is why I had so much chest pain, but they fell out like 12 years ago. <laughs> And you didn't even, and yeah, you have Baker one, Baker two, Baker three, Baker four classifications too. There's, there's four classifications. So women just need to do their research. Yes. Um, and you know, if your doctor can get all your capsule out, great. If you're like me, I had a, fir a first implant, a second implant. I'm lucky that the first surgeon did not leave in the first capsule. Right. Cause I, they, a lot of them leave the capsule in to give you um, structure. So you just have to talk to your doctor and just make sure and well, and everyone needs to have peace of mind. I know women that didn't have any capsule removed, but they really didn't have symptoms and they were more worried about going under general anesthesia. Yeah. And so they just wanted the implant out because they weren't. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. And if you don't have a lot of money, that is the cheapest way to go. It is. It really is. I mean, if, I know women that are like, I only, I, we have women on Medicaid on here that, you know, they're fighting, they've actually got Medicaid to cover it. Yeah. So just, just don't give up and always say breast pain 10, breast pain 10. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. That's the moral of the story. So anyway, well, I appreciate you, Cole. I mean, yeah, I'm, it's I'm awesome. really honest. I'm honored that you, you know, and I know I'll send you the names of these other women that I know for one of them you definitely need to talk to is Tara. Yes. I mean, okay. you know, it's the more that we can share and it's seeing yeah. real face and hearing the story yeah. is to me more powerful than reading. Um, yeah. because we see it's a real person. It's not a fabrication. It's someone's yeah. actual experience in real time where they are. Not and I think different ages, like your age, like I'm 49, everybody. I have a 17 and a 15 year old. Um, and I've never had any other major surgeries except a partial hysterectomy. Um, sure. I've been healthy my whole life. So, um, uh Oh, my battery's getting low. And, um, <laughs> so there's that, but like your story. And then like if Tara does it, she's, Another person got two little ones. I think she might have an older child, but her story was really um, crazy. Um, I, I definitely want you to talk to her. So yeah. Yes, okay. Well, thank along. you. <laughs> and I'll message That's you here a, a little bit. Thank you so that much. Good. Okay. Bye. See you, everybody.